Okay, so welcome lovely listeners. Uh, today I have got the wonderful Isabella Lambauer. Um, me and Isabella, we met properly a couple of years ago. We were both in the Dominican Republic um, at the same event. And um, yeah, and Isabella, I know, was similar to myself in as much as looking to change her life in whatever way that was. For me, it was on this drive for financial freedom and, and that has taken me a whole merry dance everywhere since then. Um, but I'm really interested to know, Isabella, obviously I don't really know what brought you to that event and you know what your story was prior to then and and obviously I know you've done lots since so so welcome firstly thank you <laughs> it's thank great you having me. <laughs> thank you so much for giving me your time um so you know we did meet in the Dominican Republic we had a great old time out there what was it that um because for me I was looking to sack off the the boss so what was it that that got you to the Dominican where where were you at back then yeah no so probably similar I actually just I think my biggest issue always was communication mm -hmm. growing up it was always more like oh yeah let's not talk too much or you know kids always have to be quiet anyway so growing up then and being then in the business world, I would like stuff so much stuff down. And then there was this huge blow up with my boss back then. And I was like, I have to quit this. No, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm too good for this. I have to quit. I, there was no way back for me even talking to him anymore at that point. It was very interesting. It was almost like, you know, you stuff so much down and then there's this just huge explosion and there was no way back for me. What, what was the job, Isabella? Um, I was, uh, I did, the, I was the office manager for an engineering uh, firm. Right, okay. Yeah. And, and so that happened and so I quit and then I, um, I found this learning platform, that online learning platform that then gave me all these different, or gave me all these different ideas that what was out there. And I mean, even though I've, I've used the internet before and emails and all this, but I had no idea about online marketing or what is even affiliate marketing or, oh, I could have a brand or how could that look like? Because I always, I put myself, in this box or this firm I've worked for, we did, we specialized in um, uh, tunnel design, uh, the new Austrian tunneling method, actually, if there is such a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was almost like tunnel vision. And- oh, pardon, um, the pun. <laughs> hmm? pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where I just, I thought I couldn't do anything else. I, I was so, I don't know, I just thought I didn't have the skills or what do I know and all these self-doubts or negative self-talk. And so that's how um, I got to this online platform and then I also saw all these things that I could be doing. And so I started uh, with, you know, learning how to build a website and learning about online marketing and things like that. And so then when we met at the Dominican, well, now I have to go back a little further. Sorry. I also always love to work with kids, but growing up, they always told me I'm dumb. They didn't literally tell me, but it was kind of implied that I could not go to school and get a degree to work with kids. Um, and so while I was then working for that engineering firm, I went back to school and got a degree in early childhood development. And so I always had this yeah, yearning to help children because I always felt I was dumb and I can't do anything, which obviously I still had the tunnel vision when I was in my 30s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and 
So who was it that made you feel that way? Was it friends and teachers or was it family? It was, uh, it's very interesting. It's, it was kind of starting in kindergarten. We had to do this, you know, this work book to go into second, first grade. I just didn't want to do it. I wanted to play. <laughs> and oh, I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And from that moment on, it was kind of like, oh, she's just gonna, you know, she's gonna do what she's gonna do, but it's not gonna be great. Okay. And so it was not so much that my, and I also was the youngest of five children. So my parents were probably very tired already by the time okay. I came around and they didn't want to, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but so that's when, when we were in the Dominican Republic, the whole, that's why I wanted to share that about the children, <laughs> is that um, we got together as groups and we, you know, did brainstorming and how could we maybe make a social impact in the world. And long story short, um, I'm now a co-founder of a nonprofit in the United States um, that empowers the next generation. And we did an online training um, where we teach mindfulness skills to just build children's resiliency, teaching them about, oh, what if I just take one breath, how I can just calm myself down or telling them about the voice in our head that if, if you know all these skills from early on, it's not going to be that you're in your thirties and you're like, fuck, I have to quit my job. Sorry. My house is cursed. No, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I love a good F word. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so that you don't grow up with all these negative beliefs. And it was really, it came from that. I didn't believe and often still today, I have to like tell myself, no, <laughs> You can and you will and I know everything I put my mind to in is gonna work out somehow maybe not 100% the way I thought it would and if I trust and I don't believe all this chatter in my mind I can you know achieve anything anything really. yeah and um, remind me what it's called your company uh, real you real, real you are just a you with the just the letter U. And it's basically giving kids uh, the tools and the awareness that we were never given when we were growing up. Yes. So they don't. And there, yeah. Them. Sorry. There's one more piece I often just forget because I get them so wrapped up again in everything I want to say. <laughs> um, it's not going to be taught by adults, it's going to be taught by other children. Brilliant. So to have the peer to peer approach. Because, again, going back to my own experience, I didn't have a good relationship with teachers. They already thought I was dumb, so what, you know? Yeah. Um, so how powerful could it be if another child or maybe somebody just slightly older teaches the other children and they think, oh, if that child is doing it, I can try it. And it's just more relatable and, yeah, because they can just learn much more effective from each other, I believe. Well, I mean, that is, that is the pure embodiment, really, of um, what my podcast is called, the Not Settle podcast, because you're already, we, we don't even need to use the Not Settle with these kids, because you, you've pre-taught them, you, you've given them the tools and the awareness, and hopefully they are going to grow up into this world and never settle for anything because they're going to believe that they can create magic and, and do whatever they want to do and work in the, in get my words out in, in their lives, which is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. And I mean, just think about it just right now. If I remember to take one breath and just also drop my shoulders and just, <sighs> yeah, just like this one second, I can really be calmer. I didn't know that. I've never, you know, this type of information or even like working with our energy and what does that even mean? 
And I think it's especially the word mindfulness, I don't like to use that much because people think, oh, this is this new age word and everybody talks about mindfulness and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it goes back to ancient China and whatever, where they, you know, would just be still. And I think, I mean, we had to be still now somewhat with the whole COVID situation all over the world. Yeah. And you can see, especially in the US, what kind of chaos erupted. <laughs> And probably it was good that there was maybe some quietness. So actually the other stuff can come up and maybe we can put in effective change to move on and not have all this unequality or, you know, in the world. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I, I've been made redundant. Um, from the the day job yay which i was actually really pleased about and i'm and i'm on my journey now to to fully go into coaching and and various other things um but in this even before that happened you know i was not racing around the country in my car you know doing twenty thousand miles a year which is what i was doing even though i love driving and i like to be out and about but it took so much time away from me and you know, even though it can be difficult at home and when you're just at home and, and having to do what you need to do, but it gave me time to do more regular exercise. I've seen so many people outside walking, cycling, running, um, people I've known, you know, that you just don't see. And more people are talking to each other in, in, in the streets. Mm. Um, more people just seem to be, even though it is stressful for some people, but I think there's also this quiet time. It's just given people the realization that we don't need to be chasing our ass uh, 24 hours a day you know it's not what life should be about so i think for all the bad side of covid i think there has been some definite good come out of it as well from my yeah. perspective, from my perspective uh, yeah. okay so well that i mean that that's amazing um I know, I know you can't really talk about the kids, but is there any little stories you could share with us about any of the kids without naming names in terms of, you know, where they were and where they are? Well, I think the, 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 the biggest thing is that, especially also if parents um, take an interest in doing it with their children, yeah. or know what or or have a certain understanding of you know of breathing or you know being mindful to your thoughts and things like that that children can point out to the adult hey mom why are you getting upset right now we could do like the balloon breath or we could do this and that together because they just also, because of the brain of a child is so much more, um, it's still so, oh my God, now I can't think of the word. Like it's not so hardwired already. It's still so plasticity, plasticity is much better. <laughs> well, and still like a sponge, they're still absorbing and they're, they're so eager, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. And so, and they remember much quicker. Mm. You know, because they don't have all these, yeah, hardwired patterns that you develop over time. Yeah. And so it's so much easier also for them to recognize or for them then to say that to the adult and they're like, oh, for, you know, to just create this awareness. And then if you can do something together and there's just a few things like that that have um, been brought to my awareness that's okay. just very um you know touching that children are so yeah receptive also you yeah. know we just as adults make it sometimes oh this is weird or i have not heard about it so i'm skeptical but children would try almost anything yeah yeah I, yeah i mean i can relate with my son um i mean he's 21 now but and even though so i've i've been you know, very spiritual for a long, long time. And he thinks he isn't, I see it in him, but he, it's not a word that's in his vocab right now. Um, but he is so, well, you've met him, haven't you? He's so, um, so chilled and he's so lovely. And he, just things come to him. And, and, I, and I'm watching it happen all the time. 
but we have our moments and even though I'm the Zen one, um, I can get stressed. And uh, he's such a teacher to me because he'll be like, you know, I know this isn't about me. So what's going on? What's, you know, bugging you? And, and I'll be like, oh, nothing, 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 nothing. And then it'll be, oh, it, it was such and such and blah, blah. And he went, ah, oh, right, okay, now we're getting to it. So he's, <laughs> he's learned how to work me, if you like. Um, have, having said that, I think I have taught him in the early days and I've been very open with him in the past about feelings and things. Um, but he is a huge teacher to me. So I can just imagine these amazing little kids that are going through your program. I mean, they must be just wonderful to be so young as well, you know? Yeah, it's, and I think it's more and more coming that schools also introduce different programs, you know, because there is, there is research out there already how if you choose just, just a small, even just a few minutes a day on a continuous basis, then children just, if before a test, they don't have to be so stressed or all these different things or dropout rates are dropping in different schools that are already using mindfulness programs. And that's just very encouraging yes. to see that that's actually, even though, you know, you can't see it, or I think that's also a lot with, you know, different religions and stuff when somebody is really religious and they just believe in it because of their faith. I think he, even though I'm not particularly religious myself, um, I think that's similar here where do you have the trust to, even though you can't maybe see the energy that's flowing everywhere or, yeah. or different things, can you trust in it or try it out and, and see how it fits you, right? And, and I think that's the biggest thing. If it doesn't fit you, forget it and move on and don't even bother, you know, because it, for everybody, it's something different also. So, yeah. Cool. So, so from the time where you basically quit your job by the sounds of it, um, and then you found the online platform and you started to educate yourself in terms of online marketing. And I know about the, the, the kids, uh, uh, business. Is there anything, you know, what other changes happened, I suppose, for you as a result of that? I mean, you, it sounds like you got to the end of your tether and you knew, you knew it wasn't you and you knew there was something bigger and better that needed to get out there and explore the world. So are there any other changes that have happened for you as a result? Well, it's actually funny because I'm currently working back at that same engineering firm. Oh my God. <laughs> And I went through, you know, different programs. Um, like I think you did yourself landmark and things yeah. like that to yeah. be really aware, getting aware of your mind. Um, where I realized what was my part in the whole thing, right? Communication. I didn't communicate well enough. So it was just very interesting. And not that I feel like I will, you know, stay there forever, but I was asked back because of some changes that were happening there. And I was really able to speak to my boss in a totally different way. And we were able to clear that out of the way, which I would have never thought would have been possible. Wow. So I'm still working there now part-time. <laughs> so that was also because I would, I, in the beginning, I would have said I would never go back. Never, never, mm -mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny and I feel now also totally different because of, because I took myself on, I think, that definitely, yeah. yeah. When did you do Landmark? Uh, about uh, two years ago. Okay. Two and a half years, two years, two and a half years ago. Yeah. 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 So for the listeners that don't know what Landmark is, Landmark is like a... Um, I, don't, I always call it self-development program. Is there a better phrase for it, Isabella? I think, no, I think that's, yeah, general. Self-awareness, self self-development, but yeah, it's very, Landmark is very centered on the fact that re our relationships with everybody that we interact with um, are, are, the, 
are the core of our life. That is the core of our life. And, and there are so many people that don't talk to loved ones for years um, and fall out with friends over something so minor, you know, and, and it goes on and on and on. And what Landmark teaches you is a simple call, phone call or conversation with that individual, no matter how long the gap's been between talking, is so powerful because the, the odds are that that person would love to hear from you. And even if it doesn't end up all rosy at the end of that conversation, there is, a, there is so much shit that you can both clear off your chest and feel lighter. It's all about feeling lighter. You know, I, I, did, I did my phone calls with family members and, and friends as well. And wow, what a difference, you know? And I'm, this, I'm not promoting Landmark, by the way. This is not what I'm doing, but it's interesting that Isabella's done it as well and it's helped her uh, reconcile with a boss that she never thought she could even look it in the face again and um, <laughs> he's now working with him <laughs> is it a him or a her it's, it's, yeah I know it's a man yeah yeah. yeah yeah so so yeah it's brilliant sorry what were you gonna say no I think that it it was it was perfect at the time to really understand how the mind works or how we associate with our story is in our head pretty much and I already made up a story about you even if I maybe even not known you right yeah <laughs> and um, another thing that I've been I have been taking on um, over the last couple of months I want to say is to kind of merge the understanding of what's going on in my heart in my head and come down to my heart and try to heal the wounds. Because what I've realized that, yeah, I can understand it and I can talk it out. And I will always come back to those really, you know, different things that happen to you throughout your life, right? And you can still be upset about it, even though you maybe talked it out with somebody. Because we are holding so much you know, shame or fear and sadness in our bodies mm. and just really dropping into our heart and body to kind of heal it. So it's actually, so I, I'm free of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, yeah, we're all so much living from our ego and from our minds um, and we don't realize just how much control that's got over us. and. We, we get so lost in it all. And that's why people are so lost at times because they're not being driven by their heart. They're being driven by external influences, what the ego, what the chatter is telling you and all these things that you think you're supposed to be doing. Um, and again, chasing your ass with it all. And um, never, you know, and women I think are especially bad at this, uh, never giving yourself any time and space just to be and just to have some time and just, just to be quiet, like you say, just to be quiet and do some breathing and do some meditation. And it's just so powerful. I mean, I, I try and do it most mornings. I don't always get to do it most mornings, but um, it makes such a difference. It really does. Um, so the other thing I wanted to ask you about, because I obviously you've only recently found this out, but you are also going into coaching the same as me. Yes. yes. You know, it, it's fun. So I think going, coming back again also to the real you and working with children, what I realized, um, it's, so we, you know, we started, everything was great. Let's do this. Let's, take the actions and let's just get going, 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 right? And then some something didn't work out the way we thought and then we were like disappointed. And so it was kind of going on like this and I realized, or we realized that unless, and although I've already done a lot of, you know, um, awareness courses and, and, and becoming much more uh, or better at it, <laughs> and becoming aware of all my limitations. If I don't really go or be 
that or embody that what I want to teach children, then I'm a fraud, <laughs> right? Because then, oh yeah, I can talk the talk, but I can't walk the walk. I mean, I, and I don't want that. So, yeah. and yeah, so I did this uh, program. I don't know if you're allowed to say names of programs or not, but <laughs> I did this program. Um, and it just, yeah, allowed me to just drop deeper. And yes, a lot of stuff has come up again. That I was like, oh my God, I thought I already dealt with this. <laughs> right but you just I, I guess it's you know the metaphor of the onion yeah a layer and another layer and another layer and it's it, it is getting easier you know the more you kind of drop it and I just saw what a how beneficial that um is to my life and so yeah I'm I'm right now going through a um through a program to then actually facilitate the same, um, I guess, process. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing one and, and the idea of mine is to, because I don't know um, too much about yours, but the idea of mine is to really highlight or, or bring people, people that are probably like myself, to be honest, a, a few years ago, you know, that, know that there's a bigger better life out there but are struggling to find their way to it you know there's lots of reasons why you, you kind of stuck where you're at um, and this particular coaching that i i'm going to be doing uh, facilitating the same as yourself is very much highlighting people's values core values um which is then looking at you know what your vision is what you know as a person what is your vision and and how are you going to get to that vision Mm. And when and when you do that work, which I've done in a slightly different way, um, it really, really, it's so powerful because it really highlights who you are to your core. Because you kind of got an idea of it, but be, until you see it sort of written in front of you and you, you put in the time to really formulate what that vision is and how you can get to it, then you're pissing in the wind a little bit aren't you um so yeah I, I can't wait to get going with mine i'm going through the program at the moment but or going through the training should i say so is it similar to what your coaching is in terms of how you're taking people through um it's more like facing your fears and not in a pushy way or in a in a in a you have to do it this and this and this way but more in a we create a really safe place where anybody could share anything that's on their heart or something that they maybe even never shared with anybody right but to read because i think that's also one of those things that we are or i can just talk for myself i have been so conditioned of what is right or wrong or what can I do or what can I not say? Um, again, going back to communication, growing up, it was always kind of like my mom telling us we cannot tell certain things to my dad. Like we would go swimming in the summer. We would have to like all help clean the house. Then we would race to the lake. My mom with five kids, like how much fun can that be, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then have to be back home before my dad would come so that he doesn't know. Like this, because then he would feel like, oh, you are just, you know, hanging out with the kids and I'm going to work kind of thing. And so that has been, so it, I, I've always struggled with really speaking up or speaking what's on my, mind which now when I say it out loud I'm like oh yeah so many people would disagree with that but <laughs> for my you know for myself I feel that it's just sometimes you feel like well what are they going to think about me or all the, the fears or are they not going to like me and all these things and I think um, the program that I'm um, going to facilitate is more really dropping deep within yourself and, and letting or facing the fears 
and then healing them also. Yeah. Ooh, that so, sounds yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be brave to want to do it, but there's. Yeah. Plenty of and you know it absolutely, and you have to be really open and willing to do the work because you know you can do a thousand million programs and as long as you don't follow through afterwards or you kind of really look at it like maybe now almost four years ago i did this program in austria where i'm originally from it was called the new human translated it was two weeks no contact to the outside world and all that kind of stuff right I'm like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be a new person. <laughs> oh, um, um, I, I sometimes love my naivety. Na 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 what's the word? <laughs> and naivety. Naivety. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> because after two weeks, I mean, I've learned like, oh, I let go of some stuff, but there was just the beginning, right? So I think that also somebody has to be aware of, okay, you know, I can tell you this was the greatest course I did and it's going to be also different for everybody, right? Yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, that, that's, yeah, wonderful. I, and I, you know, when, you, when you're on your path of doing that properly and me, we'll have to share, not share stories, but share how we're, we're, we're progressing and it's just... It's going to be oh, definitely. Really I'm so excited to I know, know yeah. <laughs> so impactful for lots of people, um, especially coming out of the, you know, the COVID times. And, you know, there's a lot of trauma going on, isn't there, as well? So, Absolutely. okay. Well, um, what, what I always do with all of my guests is, as we're sort of closing, is thank you for, for sharing um, where you're at right now and where you've been. Thank you. If you had any you know if you if you put yourself in the listener's body right now uh, somebody that sat there feeling a little bit stuck feeling a little bit um not really knowing knowing that they want to do something but not having a clue a maybe what it is but b how how to do it what do you think would be a good bit of awareness you could give them if they're you know if they're sat there stuck in a maybe a crap job that they don't like or a bad relationship or whatever it might be what what do you think you could sort of share with them now that might make them mm -hmm. feel easier i think something really practical that anybody could start right now would be waking up in the morning writing down five things that you are grateful for mm -hmm. even though you feel stuck but you know i'm grateful to be alive or to have a roof over my head or have enough food or for my relationship or for whatever or even just for the breath that i know i can calm myself down with <laughs> yeah. right i mean there could be you know many things that people can you know can be grateful for so in the morning and at night i would write down five things and just i think Focus on, just try it out for, you know, a week or two and see if that changes anything throughout your day. Because I think, I know when you feel so stuck in that place, there is often like, even if, even if somebody would have told me, do this and that, I would have been too stubborn to listen, to be quite honest, because I always have to do everything myself. Yeah. I'm getting better at that too. <laughs> <laughs> but to just be open-minded also. And there is so much information, especially on the internet. Just what is your hobby? Google something. Maybe there is a free course or there is a, a seminar you could go to or just a, a, a talk or a podcast. Just see, or if, you, if you're not sure what you like, just listen to one different thing every day or, or things yeah. like that. So to really, and you just have to, you know, if you want to, that's also, I think the thing, because if you tell somebody do this and that, but they don't want to, then what's the use. But if, if you are open to it, just explore. 
because I think it's there is no like right now in this world we live there's no lack of information no right so just explore it and then see where it takes you and and don't be hard on yourself and rush yourself mm. because that's I think and I'm still till this day I'm so, so often very hard on myself yeah. you know because it's so ingrained in me <laughs> And to just, okay, well, today I didn't do anything. Okay, tomorrow is another day. Exactly. What is one day in a, you know, a whole lifetime? So Exactly, yeah. Oh, that, that's brilliant. Um, I think that's absolutely perfect because, like you say, there is so much information out there. And, you know, when I hear people saying they've been bored through COVID, it drives me nuts because I'm like, how can you be bored? Because, you know... I mean, I know we're not all built the same, but I'll be like playing the guitar or I'll be doing something online and then I'm learning something else and I'm reading and I'm podcasts and da da da. You know, there's so much we can do with our time and, and to feed the brain and, and to feed our souls rather than sitting in front of a load of shit on TV and watching fake media uh, and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so I think that's wonderful. You know, open your mind, start start looking at things online, start listening to podcasts, start reading books, whatever it might be. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Isabella. Um, if people want to reach out or learn a bit more about you, where's the best place for them to go? Um, they can definitely find me on Facebook under my name, Isabella Lambauer, um, or also the, under the Real You Academy. So that's R E L R E R E A L U and then Academy. All one word, yeah. All one word, yeah. And that's also our website address, realuacademy.org. Dot org, okay. Yeah. Or me also under Isabella Lambauer.com. Okay, cool. So um I will put this in the show notes underneath anyway uh so you've got that one as well all right that's wonderful well thank you again isabella it's always a joy to spend some time with you always got a big smiley face <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well you know that's if we can't be a bit silly or laugh about stuff especially also about ourselves then what's what's the uh, you know if life is too serious anyway <laughs> absolutely absolutely well thank you again it's been wonderful. Thank you. And um, we'll see you, well, I'll see you soon. And uh, hopefully the listeners really enjoyed listening to you. Thank you. Thank you.